Cybersecurity has long been known for dark overtones, often dominated by fear-filled narratives of impending doom. I'm Dan Patterson for ZDNet, and Microsoft's Vasuja Call envisions a totally different reality, a world where cybersecurity is increasingly integral to all life and business. She sees the potential for a shift from fear to hope, from exclusive to inclusive, from stagnation to innovation. This shift, she says, is not just a hopeful aspiration, but it's a necessity for our security. But why? Well, let's watch and find out. So, Sue, throughout your career, uh, you've talked about the need to kind of change a conversation in cyber from these kind of dark toned and ominous rhetoric to an inspirational narrative. That's an admirable goal, but a big challenge. Can you elaborate on on that and how it might uh, play out in the real world? Yeah, Dan, first of all, thank you for having us. It's great to be here with you. Uh, It is important for us to change the narrative of security from fear-filled, dark tones to hope-filled, optimistic, innovative tones for several reasons. First and foremost, security is a prime driver for innovation, and it needs to inspire and empower people. That was one of the main reasons I joined Microsoft, because of our mission to empower every person and every organization in the world to do more. And you can't do that today without the foundations of cybersecurity. And if we don't involve everyone, if we continue to think of security as exclusive and fear-filled, then we are creating barriers to entry for defenders to participate. We are excluding entire populations who will not find this field attractive to join. And security should always be about innovation. So for the sake of innovation, for the sake of changing the asymmetry that we see in security, and for creating an inclusive environment where everyone can participate, we absolutely believe we need to change the narrative on security. That's incredibly important. Uh, How do you, though, um, recruit and train and and empower diverse voices as opposed to kind of the, right now, um, monoculture, like very... um, uh, Maybe doom and gloom is a little hyperbolic, but there certainly is a um, a an ominous overtone to the rhetoric in cybersecurity. How do you how do you practically change that, and how do you recruit uh, diverse voices? The good news is that that journey has started a few years back, and thanks to the many who have been working really hard to advance security and also changing this dialogue, there are a few things I think we all still need to do. When I started in the security field, Dan, the number of women was really small. And right now we are in double digits percent. So that's great news. Still have a long way to go. I feel like when people see people like them in security, they are inspired to join this field. So by just creating role models, by making sure that the cybersecurity defenders who are diverse have a platform where they can talk about the work they're doing itself is going to create a lot of inspiration. And then there's collective work that we need to do right from the very start, K through 12, educating our younglings about what security is about, why why security matters through high school and through undergraduate creating programs where we can include security in the curriculums and also create language, which is easy to understand, simplified, so we can train broader and diverse populations. And then the way we attract talent into the company. And once we have this diverse talent, creating the right platforms for them to bring their authentic selves and really do their best work is going to be important. So it's not any one thing, but I think it's a collective effort by all of us. And then lastly, for everyone, including Dan Yu, to be great sponsors for all security talent and then creating tools which help us along the way to do better security uh, and inclusive security is going to be important. Right now, security intersects artificial intelligence and the need seems to be very analogous uh the need for diversity and to make sure that that bias is addressed and minimized as much as possible uh but how how are these two disciplines similar and and what challenges do you face with this new emergence of generative artificial intelligence 
first understand why diversity matters so much in security, we need to step back and look at just where we are as society in the threat landscape. I'll share some stats. And the first, the first stat is this incredible exponential increase in the number of attacks per second. So Microsoft tracks password attacks per second pretty closely. When I joined Microsoft in July 2020, we were tracking around 567 attacks per second. That number today is 4,000 attacks per second. So we have this huge intensity of attacks which are being coming our way as organiza to organizations. The second one is the amount of time that defenders get to contain the escalation of an attack is decreasing pretty rapidly. On average, it takes 72 minutes from when a user clicks on a phishing link for an attacker to get access to their private data. And then third, we have a global talent shortage, 3.5 million jobs, which are unfulfilled. That's just the state of our world right now. The attackers are diverse. They come from all parts of society. They come from all backgrounds, ethnicities, economic background. So if we are not diverse and if we don't include everyone to be defenders, we are already a step behind in this very hard battle of security. And for that, for the reasons I said before, we need to create the platforms, the inclusion, the training, the onboarding. And this is where AI is going to be our biggest ally, Dan, because through the tools that, that we're seeing in generative AI, and we'll talk about more about Security Copilot and what Microsoft is doing, natural language processing just became the most powerful coding language. English is the most powerful coding language. So now, by nature, you're going to have a lot more people able to participate in security. This tool can train you while you're doing your work and it understands the way you work. So it's going to customize the, the learnings for you. And I think that's another huge way in which we can reduce barriers to entry and invite more diverse populations to the table. Tell me a little bit about Security Copilot. Uh, how does this use generative AI uh, to, to scan for and defend against cyber threats? threats um, and and how does it include these uh, diverse signals that you're talking about? Security Copilot is the first generative AI product in security in our industry. We announced it on March 28th and it is in partnership with OpenAI, the LLM models that Microsoft has been working with. At the heart of Security Copilot are two generative AI models, the OpenAI ChatGPT4 LLM model, which brings all that goodness to the table. And then the second one is the generative AI model that Microsoft has built, which is cyber specific. This model is grounded by 65 trillion signals, the largest breadth of signals and depth that we see. In addition to the human intelligence that Microsoft tracks, we track more than 300 unique nation state and financial crime actors. We track more than 50 ransomware group families. So it's grounded on this data. And then it has cyber skills built into it. For example, skills like threat hunting, skills like reverse engineering, skills like deep investigation. So this cyber specific model that Microsoft has is really based on security. These two models then come together and form Security Copilot, which we enable in our customer's environment. And it works with their data to get smarter. But it's also important to remember the data of a customer's environment does not leave that environment. So we do not use that to train the global model. So that's how Security Copilot works. Now, what it does is pretty magical. It can defend at machine speed and machine scale. So it's able to do tasks which humans, which would take humans days, weeks, maybe sometimes months, whether it is creating reports, analyzing threats, forming entire signal graphs, finding threats that can get, uh, that can be very hard to find because it's hard to distill noise and signals sometimes. And then also helping defenders really create reports and other things that are needed to stay a step ahead. So we suddenly go from really reactive to proactive uh, from to preventive and predictive security because of security copilot. One of the things that I think is really interesting is the use of natural language processing um, on on the user end and how it can kind of turn questions into action. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that process. How does that work? I do believe this is going to drive a paradigm shift. You know, security is a very fragmented 
uh, landscape right now. On average, any organization, any security team has 60 plus tools. And it's very hard to synthesize these tools and this data from these tools. There's also a lot of data and noise which comes our way. So it's like finding that needle in a stack of needles. With natural language processing and really English, now a defender is empowered to ask questions in English to understand, hey, what threat is that? Or summarize the latest ransomware threats for me. Or pick a threat and go into more details about that. You can copy URLs. You can copy code snippets. You can copy any kind of data you want. And then Security Copilot also gives you suggestions. So once you ask a question, especially if you're a new analyst, it can say, these are questions you could ask. It also helps you confirm responses. So if you get a response and you say, hey, that's right, you can confirm and strengthen that. If it's not right, because you know AI is a tool, tools can make mistakes, you can pass on that feedback. So it's a learning loop with the human in the language that we humans understand, strengthening the posture. There are also two other things I'll touch on, which are really important related to natural language processing. One is there's an audit trail that there's a continuous audit trail in Security Copilot. So you can go back and you can look at what were the actions? What did I ask? How was that done? So at any time you have this, this book, this diary of things. And then second, you have a collaboration space where you can send back. You can say, hey, I found this. I don't understand this. So I want more de detail. And you can collaborate with your two team members through the space within Security Copilot. So all those things are going to help make it really easier for analysts and for defenders to do their jobs and to actually be more productive uh, and have superpowers with them. On the flip side, how is AI aiding attackers uh, and expanding the attack surface it seems like the tool could be used on both sides or the technology can be used on both sides and you mentioned the attackers are incredibly diverse so i would imagine the use of uh, generative ai tools for malicious or nefarious purposes is equally diverse yeah attackers are super smart they're going to use every tool that they have in their toolkit to do the, the damage that they can. You know, ransomware today, or more appropriately, cybercrime is a gig economy. There are a lot of people who participate in it. It's very easy to become an attacker. And AI is, again, another tool that they're going to use. And we're seeing that, right? They can inject malware through AI or through AI. They can use AI to get smarter at how they want to launch, whether it's phishing attacks or ransomware attacks or even geopolitical attacks. And this is why it's super important that we as defenders use AI for good. And I do believe that in the case of AI, in the case secure, A, security is the best use case, and B, that we are going to tilt the scales in the favor of defenders. Because what the attackers don't have, what they don't have is this incredible signal strength, the 65 trillion signals that we get to see. This is why also it's important for us to collaborate between private sector and public sector but within all the companies to strengthen that signal intensity and build AI. And then lastly, this is why we need cyber specific models for AI and we can't use general purpose AI models like ChatGPT to do cybersecurity. Because if it's not grounded, then you're going to have things like hallucinations, you're going to get wrong data, you're going to get wrong answers, which actually is going to create a setback. So attackers are going to have the tools of AI, and they are absolutely, we should expect them to leverage that, and defenders need to stay ahead of that. And I do believe things like security co-pilot and generative AI really changes the asymmetry of that battle. So we are very excited of what the possibilities here are for defenders. Look into the future a little bit for me. Uh, where is the intersection of AI and cybersecurity headed? Uh, like the next 12, 18, 36 months. Uh, and how will AI continue to shape cybersecurity uh, and the landscape of threat intelligence? AI's value proposition in security is about that defending at machine speed and scale, or actually more appropriately, defending at the speed and scale of AI. And it is that scale and that speed which matters. There are three key value propositions. One is just simplifying the complex. Cybersecurity is very complex today, Dan, as you know. There's a lot that comes at defenders. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of tools. They have to be in and out. So it's going to simplify the complex. It is going to deliver on this promise that I hold close to my heart of an easy button for defenders. 
The second one is going to be, it's going to catch what others miss. There's a lot of signals. There's a lot of noise. And you can't really sometimes see the entirety of the signal graph, which endpoints, which devices, which network, what identities. So it's going to help you catch what things could be missed earlier. And then lastly, it's going to reduce talent shortage. So with these three key value propositions, where we are headed is having security co-pilot at the heart of end-to-end -end security. At Microsoft, we believe that comprehensive security is the only way. Else it's like locking your door with like seven locks and leaving all your windows open or the roof open for the attacker to jump in. That end-to-end -end security is going to be strengthened by security co-pilot. It's going to be augmented by security co-pilot. So it is going to be your co-pilot for the entire digital estate, whether it is we started the security operations, but think data security, insider risk, identity, access management, privacy, like all of these are just different aspects of what we need to do to strengthen security. And that's our future, Security Copilot as a product and as a platform. For ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson. And for more interviews like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And for the latest in emerging technology innovation, visit ZDNet.com.